firstly, I just want to get your reaction after hearing the chief executive uh, of Pino Ferries saying that absolutely they were uh, obligated to consult, but they didn't choose to do that. Well, I was sitting five feet behind him in that select committee room, and I couldn't believe what I was hearing. For a chief executive of a PLC uh, and a director to state on the verbatim record at a parliamentary committee that they didn't care about the law of the land and that they'd broken it, and if they needed to, they would break it again, is an incredible statement for a chief executive to make. Clearly, he's got to resign, but also he needs to be prosecuted and struck off. As a director, there's a fit and proper test uh, fit and proper person test for directors in this country, and he clearly isn't one. He also owes the uh, Maritime Ratings Pension Fund £146 million, which he's committed to paying. And we can't trust this man to do anything because he's prepared to break the law flagrantly and go on the record uh, and state that he would do it again. That is entirely unacceptable. But what we also have to do is get our people back to work uh, on these ferries, uh, doing their jobs, and stop these sackings, which are illegal. He's accepted they're illegal, and that must be put right straight away. So we're meeting with PO this afternoon, and we're hoping some, for some progress with this. We think we've got support of the politicians and almost everyone in Parliament, and we think we can get some, some laws through as quickly as possible that will change this situation so we can put this injustice right. You're talking about getting laws through as quickly as possible to put the injustice right. But if this is a company that's already said that it's broken the law, is that actually going to do any good? Well, we have to have laws that are strong enough to sanction them properly as, as companies and individual directors. There are criminal laws about being a director. And you cannot be, as the chief executive of a PLC, of a high-profile company, be allowed to sit in Parliament uh, on the record and say that you're just going to break the law. What does that say to everyone else? What does it say to everyone else in business? in public service, uh, in public life in this country, where a person could just say, I don't care about the law. It was put to him if he was driving his car at 90 miles an hour, would that be acceptable? And he said no. But in regards to sacking 800 people who have done nothing wrong, where P&O made us commitments 18 months ago that they would recruit and retain British seafarers on the record, that he's allowed to just reverse that, and in reversing it, flagrantly break the law. He's taken the mickey out of all of us. Every hard-working person uh, in the country who's got a contract of employment, but also those other businesses and companies that honour their commitments, that honour the law and honour the contracts of employment and the regulations. They need this to be addressed as well. There are other shipping companies and other ferry companies that are being undermined and undercut by this man, and he cannot get away with it. p and say that this action um, was the only thing that they could do to make the business viable again, that without the sackings, they simply effectively would go under and they couldn't continue operating. Do you accept that? And if you do, is it a valid reason? Like if, you, if the company believes that it's the only way to keep running is to make these drastic decisions? Well, how can we believe what they say? They wrote to me a little while ago saying that they would recruit British seafarers and they would retain them as their model. They took our members to work on last Thursday who were on board those ships and brought security guards on them to throw them off. How can we trust anything they say? The economy is hopefully coming out of this COVID period. Many companies up and down the country and many workers have kept the country going and these workers have kept our imports and exports going and our trade lin links for freight and for passenger services. They're just about to come into a time where the economy is going to recover. I don't believe a word they say, if I'm honest with you. Uh, the other companies who have got exactly the same problems are honouring their commitments and are going to run their business in a proper way. If this management team can't cope with the pressures of running a modern business, then they need to get out of the way and get some competent people who are going to obey the law to take their place. And that needs to happen as soon as possible. And we're going to call on the government and all the politicians to make sure that we have the proper regulations and laws in place to make sure that happens and get this company up and running again with the commitments to honour the law and to honour the contracts of employment and employ British seafarers. Because if we don't do that, we'll have no merchant navy oh. left in this country and our imports and exports will be in the hands of oligarchs in the Far East who can do whatever they wish in regards to British society and British law. That's not acceptable.